By now, pretty much everybody knows that the range on the DJI goggles is pretty freaking impressive. But that hasn't stopped people from trying to make it even better. A lot of people think that these antennas that come with the goggle are not that great, and they're putting patch antennas on the outside of their goggle to try to get better range. But a lot of these patch antennas, they're enormous. They hang off the goggle, you bonk them, you break your SMA connector, and they just take up a lot more room in your backpack than they really ought to. That brings us to today's product. This is the Luminear Axie HD, and it is a patch antenna for your DJI goggles. And what makes it unique is just how low profile, compact an install it is. Today, we're gonna put these on my goggles, and then we're gonna take them out, and we're gonna test them because at the end of the day, if they don't improve the range, then they're not really worth the price of your money. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The Luminaire Axie HD attaches to the front of the DJI goggles with just some 3M sticky tape. And that brings us to the first problem I ran into when I went to install them on my goggles. These are my daily driver goggles, and oh yeah, they've got the British Drone Industries Digidapter faceplate on them. If you're looking to put a analog module inside your DJI goggles, the BDI Digi Adapter, I think, is the best way to do it. I've got a video about that. I'll put it in the cards at the end of the video. When you're done watching this one, you can go check that one out. But hang on, because this antenna is made for the stock faceplate, so it's not going to work if you've got one of these custom faceplates. Fortunately, I have another set of goggles, and this one does have the stock faceplate. So let's go ahead and just figure out how these are going to mount. This one must be for this side. Yeah, okay. And stick it on. The Axie HD also comes with a set of these Omni antennas, and that brings us to another interesting question that we'll explore in this video, which is, which is better, to have the Omnis on top and the patch on the bottom, or vice versa? What we do know is that one set of antennas transmits and receives, and one set only receives. Why, why would it video goggle uh, transmit as well as receive. Well, it turns out that the DJI goggles have the ability to request retransmission of lost data. And that's why you see better signal when you're actually in the goggles versus when you're in audience mode. Audience mode goggles can't request retransmission. And so when data is lost, you just get a breakup and your video signal degrades. With these goggles, they transmit a request for retransmission and uh, the signal's better. But which is better? Which would you rather have? Well, we'll do a little testing and we'll see if we can tell the difference. I believe that Lumineer shows it with the patches on top. I can't remember, do they show? I don't know. Let's try one, we'll try one, we'll try the other, we'll try them both. I'm gonna do what you should never do, which is use a wrench to tighten an SMA connector. I say you should never do it because the, the brass SMA connector is very easy to over tighten and damage but I'm gonna be super careful. The other thing you wanna be careful of is don't twist the SMA connector on the goggles and break it off. You can do that, there we go. Um, the antennas that come with the goggles have this shoulder here to prevent you from twisting off the internal SMA connector. It kind of cinches it down against the back, back side of the faceplate but these standard SMA connectors don't have that, and you can actually just keep turning them past the stop inside the goggle that prevents the SMA connector from twisting off. So as you start to feel some resistance, just snug it down and stop. Don't keep twisting. Same thing, same thing with these guys. At this point, I'm gonna show you the actual flights because I know if I were to do this video and not put the actual flights in here for you to see, you would rightfully like freak out and go, what's the point? But I also, there's like five minutes of flying and a whole lot of people are not gonna be interested in like just freeze framing it and slow mowing it. And so there are chapter markers down on the timeline of the video and you can just scroll ahead if you want to. I'm gonna summarize the conclusions. I'm gonna use actual numerical data with spreadsheets to just tell you how they all stack up. But if you want to watch and dig through, oh, look, it got worse here, it got better there, feel free. And everybody else who doesn't want to sit through five minutes, please don't just leave the video and get bored. Just skip ahead and then use the chapter markers in the timeline to skip ahead. Okay, see you, see you, see you there.
I spent a lot of time looking at the flight footage and trying to sort of figure out what conclusions to draw. And I found it pretty difficult until I made these graphs. And then I really felt like I had a grasp on the data. I want to thank Mario Shimanko. Uh, his YouTube channel is RC Shim. I'll put a link to it in the video description. He gave me the visual basic script that converts the DJI subtitle files into Excel files that we could use to make these graphs. And what we're looking at here is a graph of the very first flight where I fly down to the front of my yard, then along my back fence, behind the barn, and back around again. Basically, I fly the whole perimeter of my property. Now, each of these dots represents the megabits per second. So obviously, higher is better. We start at 25 megabits per second, and then we go down to the very lowest that it gets. I found the individual dots a little bit hard to read. So these lines represent a 25 sample moving average. The other thing to keep in mind is that these flights are not necessarily perfectly synced up. So we see right here is the weakest part of this flight. The blue one is the stock antennas. The gray is with the DJI Axie HD on bottom, and the orange is with the DJI Axie HD on top. Um, these are probably the same physical location, even though in one flight it was a little bit later in the flight, and in one flight it was a little bit earlier. And what we can see clearly is that the stock antenna did much worse than either the DJI Axie HD on top or DJI Axie HD on bottom. It looks like the Axie HD on top did slightly worse than the Axie HD on bottom. The other thing that we can see is that as we come out of the barn, uh, out of the, the, the weakest area and come around to the side, the stock antenna actually recovers a little sooner. And the reason is that the Axie HD is directional. So it's, it's stronger when you're right in front of it, but it's slightly weaker when you're off to the side. So here, here at this point, the stock antenna had a slight advantage, but the other two, the other two had a slight dip as we went into their weaker area and then both recovered. It is also interesting to note that the Axie HD on top had a big dip here in the, in the beginning and a big dip here at the end that was not really seen with the Axie HD on bottom. Oh boy, more graphs. Here's what I did for this one. For this graph, I just flew up into the sky and I flew away towards the road, uh, looking towards the direction I was flying. So I was always on the main flight beam of the patch antenna. I was trying to be relatively high up in the sky so I wasn't getting any hills or there obviously some trees would be in the way. Uh, but, but just trying to get a rough distance test as much as you can in my environment without just having like you know, a desert to go fly with no obstacles. And this one's a little weird because you can see that the blue line on the stock antennas gets down to about here. And that was where I started to feel uh, stuttering in the controls and I gave up and I turned around and came home. Whereas the other two, we can see that Axie HD on bottom did significantly better and Axie HD on top, well, it almost got down as low as the stock antennas, but it recovered. And I didn't sort of reach that point where I was like, okay, I got to bail on this or I'm going to fail safe. And I was able to keep going. So again, we see Axie HD on bottom with, with Omni antennas on top seems to be doing better than Axie HD on top, but both of them seem to be doing better than the stock antennas. So what's the takeaway? Is the Luminar Axie HD worth getting? I think we can see that it definitely did give a little bit more penetration in the direction it was pointed, but a little bit less penetration off to the sides, which is kind of what you'd expect with a directional antenna. That's how they get their penetration. They don't amplify the signal, they just focus it. But since most people are probably facing the direction they're flying most of the time, this is probably worth putting on your goggles. If you did decide to use it sometimes and not other times, it is a little bit of a pain to get these off. Uh, I had to use a wrench every time. If it came with some kind of a 3D printed adapter to help you do that, that certainly would be nice. Uh, the other question is, which is better to have the Omnis on top or the Omnis on bottom? I don't feel like my results gave much of an answer there. It seemed to be about the same both ways, but I've got my Omnis on top and I'll tell you why. Because with the Omnis on top, they're up higher. 
And generally, putting antennas up higher gives them better coverage. In fact, some people are actually running patches on bottom and then the big, long, they call them rhino horns sometimes, the big, long omni sticking up. And that helps you keep sort of the best omni coverage that you possibly can with a little bit of a cone of additional directional coverage facing out in front of you. So I'm gonna run them on top for that reason. I still haven't been able to figure out if like experimentally it's better to have them on top or on bottom, all else being equal. That's gonna do it for this review of the Luminaire Axie HD. I would say another thing that you should look at is the TrueRC stubby antennas. Um, I have not done a video on those, but some of the other folks in Rotoriot fly the TrueRC stubby antennas. They are omnidirectional antennas, so you don't get that additional penetration in front of you, but they are superior antennas to the stock antennas. You'll get better omni coverage, and the TrueRC stubbies are even lower profile than these axes, and they really bring the profile of the goggles down. If you were focused more on omnidirectional coverage and you wanted some nice low profile antennas, that would be the direction I would steer you. Links to all of the stuff that I've discussed down in the video description. They are affiliate links, and that's one way that you can help support the channel. If you value the work that I do, click those links, make any purchase after you click the link, and I get a small commission. doesn't have to be the linked item. It could be any item at the store. Just click the link, make a purchase, I get a small commission, and you can feel good about not joining my Patreon. <laughs> Happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.